I had anger over my father's death and premeditated murder of him to the 20th power. So I did just what I said I was going to do. One day one of my close young friends I would gamble the horses with every day had one of the biggest punks ever with him, a brown noser with inherited wealth his father had stole. I grew up with his father, two years older than me, who he tried me dozens of times. He was twice my size. He got knocked out by me more than once. His son said, you are Kevin Blanche. I have heard stories about you for years. You are the guy who fucked off all that money and that great big beautiful house and that beautiful wife. My friend Chris, a younger non-participator of the contemporized American drool who plainly did not give a fuck, knew this punk was going to get knocked out in about three seconds by me. He jumped up and got in his friend's face and said, you don't get it, do you? Kevin lived life. It is about the living. He has lived more life and experience than you or your whole family will in 50 years. Sit down and shut the fuck up or I will let him knock you out. I thought about Steinbeck, one of my favorite writers right then. He said, he did. He died rich without passion. He died respected without friends. He knew, and I have always known, life is for the living. I love that Steinbeck quote. He died rich without passion. He died respected without friends. That's from East of Eden, which by the way, I adore that book. And when he made that score in the derivatives market 14 years old, oh, could I relate. I made scores as a 16, 17 year old, and I'll pour that out in my bigger, broader book on the floors of my incredible, sexy-ass, wild girlfriend, her and I. I was a derivative player on the Cattle Futures floors at 15 years old. 16 massive scores. Just a few short years later, Kyle Matson was dead at 45 years old. Lung cancer, a non-smoker. He was very overweight. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. He and I, because very close friends, I loved him. He was such a personal man to, in so many ways. My house was gone, thrashed by a mortgage broker, big, fat, ugly cheater named Smith. These people that ended up with my house took a, they never made a payment two years. Big, fat hillbillies named Smith from Hooper. They destroyed the fucking house. They turned it into contemporary people, never made a payment in two years. Under a diamond, never went to prison. Big, fat hillbilly back. <laughs> I mean, big, fat fuck. Watch them all sheep, <laughs> stupid motherfuckers. The stained glass torn out of the entire house, thrashed. That beautiful blue heron stained glass, which was incredible. Worth 10,000, they broke, they tore it out, broke it. That's how fucking ignorant they were. Covered with fake rock and contemporary Orwellian design. The buyer never made one payment in three years. Forged the mortgage documents and never did one day in jail. Over the next 10 years, white collar crime went from legal to encourage. Again, I wrote this two years ago. I drive by that house every day. I watch across the field my cousin who hooked up with my wife. I watch the entire community. My circle of friends and my own family, except my mom and my daughters, turn on me. All because I was rich and then I was poor. The nail that sticks up got hammered down and I was the nail that stuck up and boy did people, everyone turned on me so hardcore, I didn't give a fuck. Well, I'm still rich and always have been rich in mind and in taste of great art. My eyes see, and if they have always sought, I am rich as all true art lovers are rich, very rich, Balco rich, Pete Gomez, 1318, I say it per se, plus nine, go. I, over the next decade, would be in critical condition level five, hanging by a life by a thread twice. Now it's three times. Wow. I'd be in the emergency room with serious broken backs and eye injuries while restoring a lath and plaster 1872 masterpiece by a fool, no less than eight times. I had went in the emergency room critical eight fucking times, or critical twice, eight fucking times from 2000 I want you that, and now, well, you know what I went through. My uncle, when they got leukemia, come down here, he says, my God, my aunt's like, how many lives you got, dude? And I'm like, I know, I know. Fights, falls, mold infections, from tearing out mold as stucco, trying to save the very people who fucked me in the first place. One day I ran into one of the dozens and dozens of females I went through on that went through me. I, or I went through or they went through me. I, well, over the next few years, she said, Kevin, how is this 10-year camping trip you've been on? That's what she said. After I lost my house, my derivative career, everybody died, I said, fuck it. I said, fuck, she's out this 10-year camping trip for years going. 
I said, crazy, just like you, crazy. I love every minute of it, she said. You do not know I am still in love with you, and why? I said, why don't you tell me? I would love to hear this lie. You really don't care, for real. So many try that gig, but very few honestly have lived it. I told her that is probably the only true statement that has ever come out of your mouth in the years I have known you. Some of those DNA wealth bloodlines on the Mormon quilt. This girl was epic. I mean epic. Still is. Still is. Crazy. She's out of the freaking one of these mega millionaire fortunes. Sort of thing. And I really didn't give a fuck. You know? Maybe I still don't. In reality, I was on... I was right on that line. That line we have all experienced within the bedroom or in the our troubled use, that line that is right on the spots where big joy meets huge pain. I have been walking on that line for 10 years now. I still do not know if it is pleasure or pain. When I was a younger man, I had heard of young girls cutting themselves. I had no clue why and did not understand it one bit. During the 10 year camping trip, I was involved with a female who was Will Rogers' great granddad daughter. I told you I talked about her, she's an incredible female and had wit just like him and magnificent brain and a whole bunch of sexuality to go with. All those looks and brains. She was incredible beautiful, incredible brilliant, crazy as it gets. I was going doing a stucco job standing on roof and she was just appeared out of nowhere. She said, I saw you on the roof with no shirt and all those muscles. So I just stopped and came up the ladder. She had little cuts all over her body. And by the way, a very pretty girl. I understood now perfectly without her saying one word about it. I have no clue if it is pain or pleasure even though it. I think about it a lot. What is it I'm trying to find? Maybe I do not have, maybe I do have degenerate behavior, trying to hurt myself, my subconscious, or maybe I am simply living the American dream. Young man comes from nothing, young man makes it, young man loses everything, comes very close to that. Young man is not young anymore and makes it again. This time is mature enough to hold on. Time will tell. I trick my own mind for survival. That is the said second scenario is mine. I do know that the mind game of justification, like the yellow ribbons, but I am not in denial, far from it. I, like millions of Americans who choose to live, are not co cover my mind's sickness with an uneducated load of neo-ignorant hairspray. I choose to live and fail and make mistakes, and I live life for the living in the now. Oh yeah, before I forget, remember the oldest cheerleader? She is 50 years old now. She has fake breasts. She has Botox face. She has fake stucco effect. She has fake stoner house. She has fake so-called finesse plaster on her house. She is still the female of all the coolies of my generation want to sleep with. I just left her house. It is 4.30 a.m. in the morning. I tiptoed out. She thinks I will call her or come back. That is all she knows. Fake chasing fake. And you, you do know I'm not calling or going back ever. I am a man, but I am a purist in every sense of the word. I am authentic. I am not neo-ignorant. I am post-ignorance. I know one thing from 1999 to today. The girl I speak about, and it's in another chapter, when I was in high school, very segregated, right up here on the hill, all the wannabe coolies migrated to North Ogden. Well, all the county kids went there. Well, it was so class divided, so class, as South Ogden right here was all the real wealth, this beautiful, magnificent, filthy, stinking wealth of Ogden. I mean, unbelievable, some of the wealthiest person in the world, but the real wealth lived right here in Ogden, up top 26th Street, 20. That's where I met, I'll get into that. I met my young derivatives girlfriend, Nikki Stein. We'll talk about it. I have a whole chapter about her. She was standing naked on a table, shot in the beer. Oh, what a relationship with her and that maniac. Her and I had one when we were young. But she was out of that wealth. And uh, South Thought a lot of wealth. But in North Thought, all the wannabes, all the coolies moved there. And they moved to high school, the Leslie Hodson masterpiece. These morons tore down this incredible, it was, it was even nicer than Ogden High. They tore it down. The guy that tore it down said the wrecking ball was bouncing off of it. He went bankrupt. I grew up in that business with my grandfather. They moved up there. Oh, I was this long haired, had muscles up inside, and they wild. I was so out of control, wild. I was an artist, I was an athlete. You know, if anyone had 
hottest girl in the whole school. I mean, this girl was epic. She was a year older than me. She would be caught dead walking around the halls of that school with a guy like me. Showed up at kegs late at night in the backs of cars with me. And you know, and then she would freaking, it, it, I mean, it's just the dynamic, same girl, same girl two years ago, you know, I loved it. I treated her the same way then as I treat her now because I'm not into these fake fucking females. They actually make me fucking sick. You know, I've been tricked to sleep with them a few fucking times. That's tricked and it doesn't get you anywhere, no. You know, they, they use their fake sexuality. They make me fucking sick, just like fake rock, fake Venice plaster, fake stone, fake hairspray, Botox, fake... They all make me fucking sick. She makes me fucking sick. And they're like, well, how come you slept with her? Well, I am a fucking man, and you know, she tricked me, okay? Well, no, my dick tricked me, which I'm as guilty as the rest of them. I think with my fucking wrong head, I've fucking done that my whole life. It's caused me all kinds of problems. Chapter 10, my weighted wealth matrix that I developed this in the 90s. Weighted wealth in the United States has been crushed into factual reality. I will lay it out two years of my work right here in regard to the weighted wealth and the proof of all American wealth has been crushed by 80% of all of it. Everyone's much worse than the crash of 29. Has been the great slow motion crash of 2000 to 2009. The capitulation drop in the markets in 2008. It had been going on for eight years. The markets looking to be flat over the said eight years. Oh no. This is the reality of the your wealth. The market was in dramatic free fall for eight years before the 2008 fall via inflation in the dollar. That is all that counts. To truly understand your wealth, it must be a weighted. I have spent 10 years building my weighted wealth matrix to true wealth. Here it is, the Kevin D. Blanche Weighted Wealth Matrix Weighted Wealth Index. I have worked on this set index for 16 years now. I've used my weighted index and wealth management for 14 years, and trust me, it works like you would not believe. I still use it. Of course, I have no money after I eat up my... I had a thousand shares of... You know I had a thousand shares of Apple stock in the fall. You know, I brailed up for nothing. I inked up the whole thing to get into that freaking hospital. Was it worth it? Fuck yeah, I'm alive. Oil, gold, real estate, currencies, medium income. I have built a matrix in regard to the said index. I weight my index against any said country's major equity or bond index in regard to the study and book of mine. This set index of mine can be used in relation to any portfolio of any kind. Individual equities, baskets, real estate, commodities, bonds, currencies, any variation of the set investment instruments. My index was first used by me in 1996. This is my first official publication of the said matrix. I will start with my own country. My w index weighted in the U.S. and e equity Dow, S&P 500, NASDAQ against my weighted matrix of gold, oil, real estate, medium income, basket of major currencies into the host country's used currency. It is the case of all other countries except the United States. I have used the major index, and again in the United States, I have used an equal weight of the three major indexes. All results, as I said at the beginning of this book, will be like Malay, stepping back, taking a wide perspective, 10 years and all 40 results data. That is 10 years overall results, not annualized. Total wealth of all assets, combined cars, homes, commodities, equity bonds, all of the value of any kind of all of it. It, hundred thousand dollars in two thousand. What is it worth today? I broke down every single country. The United States. Yeah, there's the crow squawking because he really. You know, what a great metaphor that is for what happened in the last ten years under the Bush regime, the free market fairy tales, and I love it how Mitt Romney, the hairsprayed maniac from here, well, not from here, he can't, he's a Mormon, and really, really, an Ann Rander, that little, I'd like, oh, Ron, or, well, not Ron Paul, there's another Ann Rand maniac, freaking misguided, freaking idiot. No, excuse me, not Ron, I like Ron Paul, take that back, strike that, Rand Paul, talking about the Ann Rander, says she was a counter back to Russia as the triangle, as I call it, the nuclear vagina, Japan, Russia, there we go, right back to it. And Rand was born in Russia. She was a nothing but a freaking Lenin countercultures, and not John Lennon, no, the other one. You do know he changed his name as he was freaking hiding out in Austria, in Europe. The United States down 82%. We're talking from 2000 to 2008. All wealth, all wealth, every penny of it. United States down 82%. Brazil up 900 
65%. The United Kingdom up or down 26%. Norway up 148%. Denmark up 43%. Sweden up 18%. Germany up 62%. France up 12%. Italy up 14%. Spain up 38%. Portugal up 18%, Switzerland up 22%, Austria up 16%, Russia up 112%, Bangladesh up 846%, Japan down 19%, Hong Kong up 88%, China up 68%, India up 285%, Canada up 57%, Chile up 535%, Greece down 45%, Ireland down 37%. Taiwan up 57%, Singapore up 34%. Even if you had an Apple or bought gold in 2000 to 2004, the value of the return is only as good as the weighted spending power in the U.S. gains and the said two assets are much less via real inflation, which is the spending power and the said asset has when turned into a spending asset money. Dollars, folks, even most wealth in the U.S. is folks. Yeah, that's right, Clem. They said folks in 2010 in the United States. No, 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 no. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about, Clem. Yeah, Mark Twain. They fixed your house up. They, they are not all bad. Yeah, right. The chart says it is all that the great Dr. Cooley loved to say. Figures don't lie. Liars figure. The last 10 years, let the figures stand. I am no fake Ann Rander. I speak the truth, and the truth is this. We in the 1990s were rich, very rich, the richest of the people. The blowjob that changed the world is the cause, it is the inception, it is the affection of poverty, and the new action, the depth of the pain, and the real ugly. The hypothesis is mine, the hypothesis art will save us, just like it did in the 1930s. And there are minds that care, They're like the man from Ogden, Utah, my home, someone of someone who stand up. The effect is one word, and the, only, the man who cared right there, the great socialist. Mariner Eccles, my manner. The, the, it's the Federal Reserve building in D.C. is named after him. The great socialist. That's the man who raised me. It is crazy to think that it is to come to this. It is true has been better in America to be homeless than in the working class. That's the name. It has been better, and I can prove it. You've been better off being homeless over the last decade. The average American's balance sheet is what, $100,000 to the bad? When a homeless person is a zero because he couldn't get his hands on credit. Having a good credit score has been a curse as... Warren, you know what? Warren Buffett's, they, they did a thing. Warren Buffett's credit rating, I think, was 430. What is one of my great lines I love? I, you know, all these one liners I got. One of my great lines is this Happiness is not knowing what your credit score is and not giving a fuck. It has gone to the point of neo fucking neo ignorance bliss. That is truly better to be jobless and homeless than the working leveraged up poor. Think about the collusion, the lenders, from the big banks to the small, tiny loan sharking, buy here, pay here scam, the so-called hard money guys, no usury aid, this is usury. There are loan sharks without cigars, replaced with hairspray and a faith meta megaphone in their pocket, and the credit score in Adrian's and the collusion they illegally formed, it was a curse to have a good credit score over the past decade. We are human and we are good credit score was being pumped oxygen like the modern casinos do in the free cocktail to, to go up with the pumped in the oxygen. They pump free pure oxygen in those casinos to get you high. You don't even have to drink. The pond fakers want to work on your psychology in every ugly form they could dream up. Remember Jesus Christ himself threw the money lenders out of the temple like the fake Christian fakers in regard to they participate to killing millions of people for no reason. A giant sin in Christianity. The money loan shark lenders were the most part church goers with hairspray and a Diet Coke. Remember 85% of Americans who attended church on a regular basis voted for W, the dumbest, most neo-ignorant man in history. And I'm not saying president, I am saying man. The fake any rander lowered the interest rate when it should have been raising rapidly against falsely stimulated the interest rate. As far from our Ayn Rand free market philosophy as it gets, a phony, a fake, a total fraud. The interest rate is zero. So the banks and the fakers were borrowing at Nothing sponsored by the taxpayers, the debt backdoor folks. Then the collusion of the credit scoring agencies and the lenders went to work. You had a you had a late three dollar payment in 1981. Oh, so I'm sorry. You cannot get our best rate of four percent. You get our second best rate of eight percent. But in the fine print is the eight percent a week. This said scam was second only to the A. James scam and the greatest scam this country has ever cooked up and the greatest insurance scam. The 
This country has ever been cooking in the greatest scam. The average American in their life will pay time value money adjusted, which is all that matters in real. That is the true wealth number of over $1 million. Fact, you heard me right, over $1 million to the insurance industry. AIG, the insurance industry, caused this whole meltdown. As I've been ranting and raving, the banks had fucking been involved in 9-11 for everything. And my, Max Kaiser, who, the by the way, is brilliant. He is brilliant. As he's coined so many beautiful terms, give that man credit where credit is due. As he's come up and exposed that UBS was laundering all the money as a derivatives. This is, I, you know, I've never told anybody this, but the CIA came to me. They came right to me because I knew I was a derivative arbitrage genius, and they wanted to put together a forensic accounting program. They interviewed me right here on this campus. I have the letter, you know, about putting a, after 9/11, putting together a forensic accounting team, and. Uh, because they'd bought puts on the airline stocks. And George Rich, we're going to trace the money. We're going to trace the money. It's 100% electronic traceable, easy as that. You could, I mean, that's what I did for a living. It, it could be traced in seconds, even then. They traced it. See, Max Kaiser exposes I love Max for doing that. He's got balls to expose these fucking crooks. UBSC was laundering that fucking money. The fucking banks. AIG is the insurance industry. You will pay a million dollars in your life to the insurance company, and you will not get any of back. Remember this, I was watching, well, I'll get into that a whole other, like, them are a whole other fucking lectures of mine. I can go on a whole lecture about the insurance scam as the kickback rate has went from 96% to 12% in this country. Factual. Billions of dollars. That is true. The kickback rate has got lower and lower every year for 30 years in this country. It is the biggest scam in the history. I mean, think about insurance and the inception of it anyway. It was started by the mob and it's still running by the mob. And the IG Goldman Sachs New York City fucking mob, that's what they are. If the insurance industry did this, including fucking 9-11 and the UBC fucking laundered fucking man. As Matt Kaiser, as Matt Kaiser come up with the term about the Jerry Sandusky, Jamie Dimon arbitrage, which is so fucking brilliant, is so brilliant. The kickout rate, that is the rate the insurance industry pays back to policyholders, has went from 98%, you got it, the day Ronnie was elected to less than 12%, the day Reagan, the kickback rate in the insurance industry was 98%. Percent via progressive ideas by this man right here, the man who raised me in this great progressive town. Put the one in your, put that one in your crack pipe and smoke it. When Doc Brown in Back to the Future said, "What Ronald Reagan is president? You mean that B movie actor?" It is one reality, great metaphor. And somehow the neo ignorant right as him on a pedestal. The fall asleep. Go to the astrologer, spend debt run up faster in history, supply side full. Well, it is a sad but real story. You do know that is the insurance industry, IG, who took the financial 2008 down and caused the housing bubble to burst. Yes, the same IG that all your insurance dollars have been flowing to for decades. They, like a bad crooked bookie, book the credit default swaps, which are a good thing, not a bad thing. Credit default swaps were an insurance policy if they were to use, right? Of course, we know the derivatives market has been hijacked by crooks. The derivatives market has been around, as I like to say, when Caleb made his big score in East of Eden in 1917. You know, they've been around. They're hedging devices for commodity. And I can get into a whole lecture right here as how Jay Call's beautiful freaking flying Jay was taking him down in within 30 days, a multi, who I knew Jay very personally. My grandpa and he were best friends. As that was taken by guys out of my class who refused, a guy I taught with who refused to hedge their portfolio. I'll write about that because I'm going to expose all these fucking crooks. Bad thing. They were invented to hedge as the investors rest were buying all the crooked loans mortgage brokers wrote. It was the mortgage broker, the crooked mortgage broker at the local level that was forging the paper. None of those guys went to jail. That's who caused this. It still baffles me to this day how why or no one went after the mortgage brokers who started this scam. They all pulled white collar crime of epic magnitude right down to forging signatures. They are the guy who's freaking mayor, well, I don't want to get into that because he'll probably sue me for slander. I'm going to expose this guy. He's a mayor in out there in Davis County right now, biggest mortgage scammer. And I know facts. I can put that guy in prison so far. I know a bunch of them right here I can put in fucking prison if, if the regulators would grow a fucking pair of balls. These guys are crooks, and I can fucking prove they're fucking fraud. They're the ones who caused this in the inception. They, IG, finished them off. The bad book, he never placed the bet he lost big time and just simply refused to pay. 
So the United States Congress left and right stepped in and said we will pay 100% on the dollar to only AIG and let's not forget Sachs, the only 100% on the dollar. Wall Street did not cause this. They did aid and abet it. What a sweet deal gig. Let the investment bankers go down and save just one. I mean, clear out the whole investment banking community. Clear it out. Replace it all with computers. A guy like me got replaced. I had a beautiful finance career there. I got replaced. Well, they wiped it out. Talk about collusion. Wipe out the entire industry and just left AIG and Sachs thing. And anybody who was competition at them, let them go down in flames, which they did. They didn't bail any of them out. Those guys went down in flames. All the firms on Wall Street, just those guys left standing. Wow, no more investment makers, just us. The New York Empire should did this to themselves with the blind politics as religion. Why? I will tell you why.